Hello, Malcolm here. Welcome to Tuesday Teaching Tips, episode 317, and today we're continuing our series on the 10 Commandments of Effective Preaching and Teaching. We've had an introduction, we had the first tip last week, and so this week we're talking about our second one, which is this. Proper planning and preparation prevents poor performance. Now, our preaching and teaching isn't a performance in the pure entertainment sense of the word, but it is a presentation of hopefully helpful information about God, about Jesus, about the Holy Spirit. And as such, we are, in a sense, performing because we are speaking things we've already prepared to speak about. And uh, in that way, we hope that what we then present will be effective. The goal in the end, as well as being true to Scripture, is that we are effective in our speaking. We find uh, Paul and Barnabas particularly inspiring in Acts chapter 14 and verse 1, where it says that when they went into the synagogue, they spoke so effectively that a great number of Jews and Greeks believed. And that's got to be my goal and yours, isn't it? Not just that we teach truth, but that we teach it effectively. And there are ways we can do that by, uh, by certain practices and habits and acquiring certain skills that will help us to make the most or perhaps enable God to use his word most powerfully amongst the people who listen to us. So that's our goal. So we do have this second tip we're going to talk about in a moment about preparation. But I wanted to talk about a, a point of conviction about preparation that's important before we get into some specific tips. And it's this. You see, preparation doesn't begin the moment somebody asks you to speak. Perhaps when you're given a preaching assignment or a teaching opportunity, that's actually not when your preparation begins, funnily enough. It starts as we carefully and deliberately and consistently study the scriptures day by day by day. Because regular study prepares us to teach a text, making us better able to put into context this particular text or topic with the rest of God's word. So you're being prepared by the word in your heart and mind by your regular study, which then prepares you to prepare for the actual specific lesson that you're then going to be doing. So it must be said that preparation is really largely about disciplined, continued study. And if you get that right, most of the rest of it, of it will be fine. So if you do nothing else from this tip, at least d commit yourself to daily, regular study of God's Word. Think about it. How was Peter able to stand up and preach the first, uh, you might say, Christian sermon in Acts chapter 2, blending together his experiences, if you look at that text, his experiences of Jesus, prophecy from Joel, uh, Psalms of David, and putting it all together in a message that resulted in the baptism into Christ of at least 3,000 people. I would say that's a pretty effective lesson. But in part, it was because of his the three years of instruction by Jesus that he had with the other apostles, including the 40 days of teaching immediately prior to the arrival of the Spirit. We find in Acts chapter 1, he references the earlier teaching Jesus gave him and the other apostles. And it also says in verse 3, that he spoke about the kingdom of God in the 40 days between his uh, resurrection and his ascension right before Acts chapter 2. So all of this is preparation for Peter to preach that supremely effective lesson. If you get nothing else, take this point away. Regular habits of study help with the tendency to procrastinate when a speaking project looms because you will already have an ever-growing body of material to draw from. You're never then starting from scratch. Briefly, some planning and preparation tips. I'll just give you five today. Firstly, start your preparation early. Now, if you're in charge of picking your text, then do so well in advance. If you're asked to speak, somebody else gives you an assignment, request as much notice as possible. It helps if your lesson is part of a teaching series because you'll know what's coming up in the uh, next few weeks and that will make quite a difference. Start early. Secondly, Use a study and a preparation process that works for you. Develop your own. I've worked on mine over the years. I dare say it will continue to change. Get tips from other people about what works for them in their study and preparation process, as I give out tips like that. But work on your own. Templates can be a useful way to do that. And I'm going to include as one example uh, in the show notes um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, an example of what I'm working on now, which is a passage in Mark chapter 5 for a sermon this coming Sunday. Uh, there's a mind map there. You can have a look at that and see if that kind of thing is helpful to you. Uh, the next tip would be, thirdly, to pray through the scripture and the topic. One of the ways that uh, we prepare well is by letting the text prepare us and praying through it or praying through the topic helps to prepare our hearts, connects the topic with our hearts and God. Fourthly, then do your best and pray and ask God to help you to live what you're going to teach on through the week. 
Preparing ourselves is part of preparing the text and preparing the lesson. And finally, fifthly, if you get stuck, as I often do, I get stuck partway through the preparation or even trying to figure out what is my main point or what should I teach and preach on, recruit an advisor. Get someone to, to talk it over with. So I'm thinking about this. What do you think? Or I'm not sure what to talk on. What do you think about that? Or I've got two possible scriptures. Which one do you think would be better? I often, of course, do this with my wife. And in fact, the sermon I'm going to be doing this coming Sunday is a result of a conversation with her because I had some ideas, but I was confused about what to pick. And I talked it over with her. And I don't know if it was my idea or hers, but nonetheless, I got settled on that passage in Mark chapter 5. So when you are preparing, those are five things you might want to be thinking about. Firstly, start early. Secondly, use a tried and tested preparation and study process. Thirdly, pray through your scripture or your topic. Fifth, uh, fourthly, live it out during the week. And finally, if you get stuck, recruit an advisor. So what do you think about this topic this week? Is there anything I've missed out? I know there must be. I've only scratched the surface here. Which ones of these tips might help you the most? Next week, we'll go on to our third commandment, which is ooh, ah, wow, uh, get and hold. That's about how you get your audience's attention and hold that attention so that they can absorb what is in the text. Finally, I would encourage you to consider joining the Athens Institute of Ministry for the UK and Ireland program, our teaching program, which helps equip people for preaching and teaching. This last Saturday, we covered Old Testament interpretation. And there were some things in the preparation of that and in the teaching of it on the Saturday that I incorporated in the sermon I preached on Acts chapter 2 on the Sunday morning the next day. We keep learning and it then refreshes us and it refreshes the people that we speak to. So do please consider joining us. Uh, you can find all the details at aimukandireland.com, all one word, and I'll put that link in the show notes. If you have any questions, do drop me a line. Please add your comments to this week's uh, uh, episode. Uh, let's add them publicly so we can learn from each other because we learn best when we are learning in community. Any questions about the Bible? Then drop me a line, malcolm at malcolmcox.org. And if you sign up for my newsletter at the website, malcolmcox.org, I will send you a free copy of my ebook on spiritual disciplines. Pass the link on to anybody you think might benefit from it. Subscribe, hit that notification button. And I do hope and pray that you find these, these commandments as such helpful in your preparation and helpful in making your lessons as effective as they possibly can be. Till the next time, remember, keep calm and carry on teaching. Take care and God bless.